Every time you talk to an AI, an LLM, ChatGPT, something like that, it entirely forgets you right afterwards. So how does it keep the conversation going when you send in that next message? Well, that's exactly what we're going to explore today. It's called context engineering, and it really is a fundamental aspect of how we build systems agentically, basically how we keep the conversation going with an LLM. By the end of this, you'll know how prompts, memory, files, tools, all of these things coordinate together in context engineering. It's actually a really critical piece if you're doing any serious agentic or sophisticated workflow work with LLMs. So let's dive in and get a big picture of what context engineering is actually all about. Okay, today's gonna be an easy one, but a critical one. We're gonna look at all of these moving parts inside of what context engineering really is and whether or not it's separate from prompt engineering, which you've probably heard of. So as I said, when you meet an LLM, every single time you meet that LLM, it has no idea who you are. And the only way it can tell who you are is if you introduce yourself every single time. And that's what we call the context. Now you've heard about these contexts. They're a certain size. You can only put so many files in, manage your context, don't bloat it, all of this extra stuff. But essentially what's happening is every time you talk to an LLM, you have to send in literally everything that it needs to execute that task that you're asking for. So if you're prompting a question, give me this information out of my notes, you obviously need to supply your notes. If you supplied your notes in the last conversation or the last message that you sent it, the next message, again, it's completely forgotten you. So what's happening underneath the covers in something like ChatGPT is they are managing that context for you. Context here is really just a bucket of everything that goes in. This is just a container concept of all of the information being sent in that the LLM has a chance to use to answer the question. So let's take a look at the different parts inside of a context. All right, as I mentioned before, the better you understand this, believe it or not, the better you're going to be at kind of wrangling what the LLM gives you back. And this goes for just chatting with ChatGPT, as well as building full-blown agentic systems in the future. So this is really critical information, literally for anybody that's using LLMs, and these days, that's pretty much all of us. So the first concept I wanna cover is memory. Now, what is memory? Memory is a term that we use because of our brains, and we kind of understand this idea is it's some context from the past that we have. It's literally the same concept here with LLMs, Memory might be the historical conversation. Like I said, if I was having a conversation and I previously sent a file into ChatGPT and said, give me a summary. If I then say, can you give me the action items from it? It needs to be sent in again. So that entire concept needs to be sent back to the LLM so that it can make a decision on how to do the action item. This is historical conversation. This happens in ChatGPT all the time. There's also possible personal information. ChatGPT might know what region you're in and be able to construct dates appropriately and insert those into the information. So this memory is just kind of the background information that's always being stuffed into the conversation on your behalf, not stuff that you've actually actively asked. However, as an engineer, this is the active part that you have to manage. For example, a long conversation with ChatGPT, I can have thousands and thousands of interactions with it back and forth. At some point, I've had too many and it can't all fit in there. So what are they doing to make sure that the whole conversation is within the brain when the brain has to answer my next question? Well, unfortunately, the answer to that is engineering. What they're really doing is trying to figure out how to summarize the previous conversation and pull out the most important nuances of that conversation and then send in the last maybe 10 messages. It's really gonna differ, of course, but imagine the most recent messages, they're waiting the heaviest thinking, that's where the majority of this conversation is going on right now, so let's make sure we send all of that in. And this is where we start seeing something like drift. If you've ever noticed the longer conversation you have in the same chat context, the less kind of forms to the things you've asked it to do in the past and you have to remind it, no, didn't I tell you not to do that? Or I don't want that kind of information. Don't use tables, always use a canvas. All of that kind of stuff with ChatGPT is because of this summarization or management of the conversation history so that you can continue to use that big context window that you're really trying to use. So that's really what memory is all about. Let's take a look at the next item. All right, files. Files are really obvious. This is an easy one. You 
kind of are supplying files, we're going to use ChatGPT again and imagine that you drop a file onto ChatGPT and say, here's my notes, please summarize them. Obviously, in that case, you've given it a file. Another one that I love doing is something like screenshot. So when I have a screenshot and I really want to ask questions about it, in fact, believe it or not, in some cases, you'll see a prompt later that I built just from one of these pictures, one of these slides that I've created. And I just basically gave the slide to ChatGPT and said, can you make a prompt out of this for me? And it created the prompt and we're going to use it. So you'll see this in action. Screenshots to me are critical. If you're not using them, hot tip, definitely, definitely start using screenshots. Another one is RAG. And this is kind of a special term, retrieval augmented generation, which is a special term that just means as you're asking a question, the people in the engineering sphere before it gets to the LLM are saying, okay, what I what do I think they're asking about? Let me give you an example. Let's imagine I go to your website and I say, ooh, I want the top candy released last month, okay? It's supposed to give me back the top candy. If you sent that to ChatGPT, gave it back to me, I'm gonna get some random version of that. But you run a store and you actually sell three pieces of three different kinds of candy, right? And you want those to show up when somebody asks this question. So the first thing you do when my request comes in, you take a look at it. You really ask an LLM to take a look at it basically and say, do I have anything in my data that seems to kind of help answer this question? If so, this is what happens. They don't send that information back to you because they don't know how to talk in natural language. They actually take the records that they find in their database and they put it into the context. That's these five. And so the whole question goes, the question I asked, tell me about the top candy, as well as the three things that they found in their database that they've shoved into this context quietly. Those are gonna, of course, come back as part of the answer. Pish posh, I'm buying your candy. Congratulations. Okay, tools, tools are critical. Here's one that you might've heard if you've had your ear to the ground around here, tool calling. LLMs, different models, know how to perform tool calling. I'm actually about to show you exactly what that means. But basically, when you talk about providing tools to an LLM, an LLM is just a decision engine trying to come up with an answer or a string of words or a, an image or something like that. It's not actually going to run those tools, mostly. Some of these new models actually have a facility to be able to execute these tools internally, but let's talk about the very general. What you really are asking is for the LLM to give you a response that says, oh, you know what I think you should do? I need to get the whatever is returned by calling this tool. Please go run that for me, gather the responses and give those back to me, very similar to RAG, by the way, and then I'll answer the question that you asked. So if we look here on the left, you can see that there it says, you're a helpful assistant, that's the system information, and another system information is saying, here's the available tools. The one that it's mentioning is a web search tool, and the description is, this is a simple web search tool, you just need to provide a prompt for it. And then the user asks, what's the weather in London? So this is kind of actually the message that you would send along in a request to an LLM. Now, you haven't actually given it the web search tool. You've just told it there is a web search tool that I'm aware of, and here is what it's good for. And then the LLM chews on that question and says, oh, whether tomorrow. Oh, well, I, I don't know much about tomorrow. I'm kind of a past tense kind of thing. Let me check this web search tool. So what it replies is on the right. It says, oh, you need to call this tool. Here's a tool call. And the arguments that you send into that tool are weather in London tomorrow. And basically what your system does, it makes that call, gathers responses, puts those in basically as files, just like RAG did, send it back to the LLM. The LLM chews on all of that again and gives us a response using the results that came back from that web search tool more than likely. Nice and easy. Okay. The next one is actually, it's called out in blue here for reason. This is a big one. Prompt engineering is another thing that you maybe have heard of. And it's it's really an important thing. It's actually always gonna be an important thing when we're speaking plain language to systems that have to interpret the language that we're using. And that might look like how you ask the question or what instructions you give to it or which words are in which order. That's a little less frequent these days. Models have moved on from that kind of level of specificity and they're a lot more generalized. However, they still really care about what you're asking in your prompt. So we're gonna dive into what it means to be a prompt or what a prompt looks like so that you can see the moving parts here. And I wanna describe something here real briefly. So let me jump out. Okay, why are we going through all these moving parts? There's a lot of moving parts that we're describing already, right? We have tools and we have files and memory and now prompt, okay. So what is all this about? Why are we talking about all of these moving parts when we're just saying, be careful what you put into the system? 
it matters what you what you get out of it. That's pretty obvious, right? That's certainly what we're saying. I am separating these, and a lot of us are separating these as explicit areas of interest, most specifically so that you can see them as a dial. Once you start engineering with these, even when you're working with ChatGPT, which we will do in a second, and you will see we're basically engineering ChatGPT, you need to understand the different dials you have to turn. You're going to be able to get much better performance out of these things if you actually perceive the different elements that are going into the context or the prompt as things that you can adapt and kind of test to figure out if I turn this one a little bit, does it get better or worse? And this one a little bit the other way, does it get better or worse? That's what this is actually all about. So what we're going to do is we're going to dive into the different parts of the prompt. It's going to look big, but don't worry about it. You know all about prompts largely. So this one should go by pretty quickly. But I think this one actually has the most potential to give you something you can do literally today when you use ChatGPT next. Let's dive in and look at that. Okay, back into the world of the prompt. So we're going to go through and take a look at a prompt, but you know, we all know very well, if all you did is went to ChatGPT and said, where did I leave my keys? You know, you're not likely to get a great answer back from that. But if you went to ChatGPT and said, I went to my mom's house, I ate at Burger King, I drove back home, and now I can't open the door. Can you help? Where did I leave my keys? It's probably going to tell you, have you checked your car? Okay, so now that we move into the different parts of the prompt, we want to kind of separate them as much as we can. Like I was mentioning before, really, this is all a big string, basically. Each prompt, of course, you've sent in thousands of them at this point, are just a big string. So why would it be so separable like this? Well, this is the fun part. Let's take a look at what you might put into a prompt. And certainly engineers are already using these techniques. The first thing that you very often will see in an agent system is kind of tuning the role, setting the role for the engine or the LLM that you're talking to. Something like, you're an expert in all things Ryan Reynolds, which we all should be, if you ask me. Personality. Okay, that's another one. These start to sound like the same thing if you say it too close to one another, but you can kind of set the, the temperature, essentially, of the agent that you're talking to to say you're very talkative, you're too talkative, and you hate it. Okay, we can all start to imagine what we might get back from a system that's really an expert on Ryan Reynolds and talks too much but hates to talk too much. The next one we're all aware of, which I'm calling the request. This is just basically, to you and me, the stuff that we type into ChatGPT. To an agent system, it's basically the final request or the executable aspect of what you're trying to get out of that agent. So if you have an agent that you're building, setting all these rules, you probably wanted to do something. This is the what do you want it to do, of course. The format. Okay, we all know about format. I bet many of us don't use it. We've probably used it a few times by saying something like, return me a poem, you know, write me a limerick. I mean, y'all are still asking for limericks, right? Those are fun. All right. And other things, right? We we will say, give me an image. Some of these multimodal models can do audio, can do images. There's a lot of format types that you might not necessarily think are format. Now, inside of this one, I left this one off. This is kind of where you might put examples. And examples are truly, really, really important, truly important to the way that you would do prompt engineering. If you do not give examples, the model has to figure out how it might give you the response back. If the format that you're looking for is important enough to you, you can simply say, here's two good examples and here's two bad examples of answering these kinds of questions. And almost certainly that kind of fine tuning at the prompt level will give you better results. So you, if you have an idea of what you are looking for, start using format in a couple examples and I almost guarantee you, you'll see its value. The next one, many people don't explicitly use, but we do use them. Constraints. And again, remember, we're separating all of these things not because they're actually unique things. It's actually kind of part of the language that we use to talk to a natural language engine. So the constraint here, never return a movie containing Ryan Gosling. I mean, come on. Obviously, it's Ryan Reynolds, please. And then evals. So evals are something that are very common in something like uh, an agentic system, where basically at the end of something, you have another LLM call or another algorithmic system that says, go take a look at what we got back, make sure it's in the right format, make sure it passes the right message structure, make sure it, all the movies contain Ryan Reynolds as an actor, for example. But you can also do this in your prompt, and it's basically reasserting other parts of the prompt that you've already put in. So we've reached the end. If you're kind of looking at this saying, well, this is really not special, 
Brilliant. You're already doing almost all of this. All I'm really pointing out is each one of these can be independently tuned. And if you start separating them in a way that you know how to tune each one of them, your prompt responses will get much better. I wanted to take this. So I took this, gave it to ChatGPT and said, make a prompt for me using that file of a screenshot. And it really did a great job. So I want to try this and see what we can get back because, you know, what are the best movies that Ryan Reynolds has been in recently? That's what we really want to know. Okay, you can see it here. This is basically the role, expert all thing Ryan Reynolds, personality, format, constraints, evals, and requests, exactly as we had on the other page. You can even write your, your prompts in this way. If you're creating custom GPTs or something like that, these kinds of prompts really start to help. And this is where you get into prompt engineering. And prompt engineering and context engineering are so married that they're almost the same thing in many cases. But you might imagine there is a unique prompt potentially going every single time and the context may remain very static for different state. So let's run this and see what we get for the five best action movies of the last five years from a very talkative Ryan Reynolds loving system. You want the best five action movies of the last five years and they must star Ryan Reynolds? No gosling allowed. Challenge accepted. I'll keep it punishingly pun filled but sarcast just enough to be Ryanific. <laughs> and yes, way too talkative. My bad. But hey, when you're in denial, you just keep going. Deadpool and Wolverine, Adam Project, Free Guy, Red Notice, Hitman's Wife's Bodyguard. <laughs> All right. Okay. So, so it definitely works. Okay. So in a nutshell, that's context engineering. As you heard, I was just separating so that you can turn the dial on the things in the different areas that really matter the most. And each one of them has a reason to be turned in different states. I hope you enjoyed something like this. I know this maybe was an earlier or more entry level perspective of what context engineering is. If you like this kind of stuff, I would love to cover more of them. Let me know in the comments the kind of things that you'd like covered. Uh, thanks for coming along for the ride and I'll see you in the next one.